In this video, we're going to continue our theme of looking at the idea of mental simulations. In particular, we're going to take a look at this really, really interesting study by Swartz and Black, published in 1999, called Inferences Through Imagined Actions, Knowing by Simulated Doing. So this is a really interesting paper. It's quite long. It has five experiments. And in what I'm going to do here is just to provide an overview as opposed to get into the details of each experiment. It's a really interesting paper though, and so I would recommend um, taking a closer look. Now in this paper, um, they really examine different types of things. So what they do is they, they base their experiments on... Um, this idea of the tilting um, of cups with water. And so we can see a schematic representation here of a narrow cup and a wide cup, and they have a certain amount of water in them. And so um, in this particular one, it's saying if tilted, would the two cups pour at the same angle or at different angles? And so there are five experiments all involve variations upon this basic type of theme. Now, using this kind of experimental paradigm, the paper really tries to um, examine different ways of answering this question. Um, not necessarily just this question, this is the, the example that they happen to use. But the first one they call um, knowing by description. And what they mean by this is that, you know, maybe you're making um, propositional inferences and these could be um, available to you by using kind of rules or heuristics. We're going to look at this in um, a bit more detail to elaborate on what that means. Another way that people could answer this question is um, to know the answer by viewing. And so this would be a bit like um, uh, recalling events in the past or visually imagining things. Um, knowing by doing is another example. So they say, when knowing by doing, people draw inferences about the world through their actions. So they could either um, perform this act kind of... Um, in reality with the, the cups, or they could perhaps um, hold their hands up perhaps. But what they really focus on in this paper is this concept of knowing by simulated doing. So also known as mental simulation. The question addressed by this article is whether people can also draw inferences through a mental simulation of knowing by doing. Can they, for example, mentally simulate tilting a glass and in this way determine how far it can tilt before spilling. So these are the main um, kind of aspects th that were looked at in this paper. So just to think about that in a bit more detail, they talk about this problem, uh, a different problem now to the, the water tilting, but they talk about the issue of um, five horizontally linked gears. So consider, for example, a chain of five horizontally linked gears. Assume that the gear on the far left rotates clockwise. What will the gear on the far right do? And so you can imagine that there are different ways of coming to this answer, of coming to a prediction. One way to solve this problem is to apply a parity rule which states that all odd gears turn one way and all even gears turn the other. So I've represented this in the diagram above by showing that all of the odd number gears like the first, the third and the fifth will all rotate clockwise but the even number ones, the, the second and the fourth will rotate anti-clockwise and that's what they mean when they say parity rule. So this is interesting because you could immediately come up with a hypothesis here. You could say, um, what happens if there are 59 gears 
all linked in a horizontal manner like this. If you used this uh, parity rule of odd and even, um, then you can imagine that you might be able to answer this question even if you're talking about thousands of gears because all you have to think about is whether the gear is odd or even. And so this is kind of really what they mean in terms of um, using kind of rules or um, heuristics. Another way to solve the problem is to model the gears, perhaps using one's hands to represent the position and motion of each interacting gear. It is the gestural representation and not the rule representation that satisfies most people's intuitions for what counts as a simulation. So this is really interesting. Another way is rather than by using some kind of um, descriptive rule, um, what you might do is actually to simulate this. Um, and they talk about potentially, you know, using your, your hands as, as an aid in order to complete this task. So that was just a quick look at, um, you know, just to think about the, the differences in the ways that you can solve this problem. And um, I recommend looking in the paper if you're interested in more details about this. Now, what I'm going to do is just to progress through the findings. And um, like I say, it was a long paper, five studies. And so I'm summarizing this by showing you um, extracts from, from the paper. Five studies generated evidence to support the proposal that there is a form of problem solving that may be called knowing by simulated doing. So that's interesting. We know that they're looking at simulated doing, um, but they have five studies and they all support this idea that you can solve problems, make predictions by this simulated doing. In knowing by simulated doing, an imagined action not only facilitates an inference, it is the inference, independent of any visual awareness or descriptive evaluation of its truthfulness. So this is, this is really interesting. The authors are trying to establish um, simulations as being... Um, kind of like a meaningful, real cognitive activity and that this is how you solve the problem. The most straightforward contribution of the current research is evidence that people can solve a problem about a physical event through imagined actions, even though they do not know the answer descriptively. So this is an interesting one. We talked about... Um, different ways of, of knowing. Um, you could come up with some kind of descriptive rule, for example, um, as we saw in the COGS example. But in this paper, they are showing that people can solve problems through mental simulation, um, even if they can't answer questions descriptively. Almost everyone correctly tilted the thin glass farther than the wide one. Because this accuracy occurred for three different shapes, some unusual, it seems unlikely that people were simply replaying a memory. That's quite a neat thing. Instead, they were inferring the amount of tilt through their simulation of the water's behaviour. In contrast, when people explicitly judged whether the pair of glasses would pour at the same angle, their inferences were rarely correct. So this is interesting now. We're getting um, a dissociation in how accurate people's inferences and predictions are um, based upon the way in which they are asked to solve the problem. Moreover, their tilting performance was not predictive of their accuracy in the judgment task. So that's interesting. It's not just that um, a given participant um, is better at the simulation activity than the describing um, 
the explicit judgment activity. More than that, it seems that performance in these two tasks um, are somewhat independent. So this is interesting evidence that there are um, different processes going on here. Experiment two further supported a dissociation of imagined actions and descriptions by showing that people did not have propositional knowledge, a propositional knowledge base, explicit or implicit, that could have led to the accurate tilting. So this is essentially trying to kind of rule out the idea that um, people are actually solving this problem through um, like propositional knowledge through like symbol manipulation um, and that the mental simulation is is some kind of weird side affair um, what they're actually saying is that um, they're establishing evidence for mental simulation being a real thing separate to um, propositional knowledge and um, symbol symbol manipulation that kind of approach Experiment three showed that people could complete the simulation solely in their imaginations and without overt motor activity. So that's interesting. Experiment four showed that the simulations use causal propagation because people had difficulty going backwards and against gravity. So this is a really interesting one. One of the ideas of you know mental simulation is that you're using your knowledge about how the world changes from one moment to the next, which you could call intuitive physics. And um, one of the things about that is that, well, time goes forwards. And so this kind of fits with the idea of, of using like an internal physics simulation um, because why should you just be able to reverse that backwards in time, for example? Maybe you can um, think and simulate things backwards. Maybe this is doable. But what they're saying is that in this task, people had um, difficulty when the task involved like counterintuitive physics, I guess. Finally, experiment five indicated that people's simulations do not necessarily correspond to their visual perceptions. So in these experiments, they're really trying to tease apart different ways in which you might know or, or come to the answer. Okay, they, they do look at this issue of visual imagery as opposed to um, simulations. A focus of the current research has been the attempt to determine whether there are psychological components of simulated doing that are distinct from what has typically been explained under the umbrella of visual imagery. So I won't go into this that much in the video, but what they're saying here is that they're, they're arguing the fact that visual imagery alone is not the same thing as simulated doing. Although we believe simulated doing partakes of visual imagery, we do not believe it can be reduced to visual imagery. There are two reasons that we consider. The first has to do with the representation of physical forces and constraints, and the second has to do with the distinction between doing and viewing. I won't elaborate on this um, here, but in the discussion of the paper, they have um, two sections corresponding to these ideas of physical forces and constraints and doing and acting. So if you are interested in how um, simulations by doing um, is kind of different from visual imagery, then the answers will be in the paper. So overall, what this is, I found this a really interesting paper. I've just um, attempted to provide a brief overview here rather than to go into the experimental details. But they, they basically explored five glass tilting experiments. And 
um, they really tried to draw a distinction between different ways of solving this problem. So they talk about knowing by viewing, so that might be considered as uh, a memory from the past, for example. They talk about knowing by description, and so what they mean here is um, the use of rules, um, propositional logic. Um, a good example to, to kind of get your head around what that means is to think about the gears task. But then they also really try to explore this idea of knowing by simulated doing, which is also known as mental simulation. So um, finally, they propose that mental simulation may involve visual imagery, but that it cannot be reduced to it. And so that they're saying these are um, two separate things. So I hope that was an interesting summary. I found the paper very interesting. And of course, if you want to know about the gritty details, then you can go and dive into this paper.